it is what it is, YouTubers. Matt the Fanatic is here again. This time I'm doing what I call the laser beak problem. This is probably specific to the Glencoe book that I use uh, in class. And so students are having issues with this, so I thought I'd post a video. So why, why I call it a laser beak problem? Well, I think of the black lines here as the cannon, and uh, the blue lines here as sort of the focuser of the energy. And so what the uh, first thing that students should do when they start a problem like this is draw in the laser beam. So I'm just going to go get a nice bright red laser and just right through there. Now it's important that it goes right through there. Uh, we're assuming that uh, these lines up here are parallel to each other. And I want to draw that laser beam so that uh, it's parallel to those first two lines. It's going to be really important for uh, our problem there. All right, and so now all three of those are parallel. So now what um, I tell my students to do is to go ahead and cover up half the picture. Concentrate on a piece of it at a time. You notice that I give you two angle measures, one on each uh, side of the laser cannon. So we're going to cover up this side. And you'll notice that uh, we've got these six angles. One, two, three, four, five, six. And these six angles all have uh, relationships like alternate interior, corresponding, and consecutive interior. And so the first thing that you want to do is fill out all the angles that you know. So um, the 72 degrees here, I know that uh, this one's got to be 72 because it's a vertical angle. And I know that this one down here has got to be 72 because it's alternate interior uh, with this one. And it's also corresponding to that one. So right away I've got those three 72s. Now I'm missing these other three obtuse angles and I can find that by subtracting 72 from 180 and I'll get 108 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and label that 108 degrees and plug that in right there and then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the angles that I know are 108. There we go, vertical angles there and corresponding or alternate interior, however you wanna look at it. And so then I've got all of those angles filled out and I wanna do this exact same thing on the other side. So now i got to find a way to get this up here. There we go. And now I concentrate on just the other side. And I'm going to have very similar relationships down here. This one first starting with the 129. And so I know that uh, vertical angles, that's 129. And I know that corresponding as well as alternate interior, that that's 129. And then I can subtract uh, 129 from 180 to get this other acute angle over there. And when you do that, you will get 51 degrees. So I go ahead and I fill out 51 degrees. And then I fill out the rest of the picture with that 51 degree angle measure. I'm going to have vertical angles there and corresponding slash alternate interior there. And so now that I have everything filled out, I can take that away and notice I can find any angle in the picture that the book might want me to find. And oftentimes, uh, the book wants me to find uh, this angle right here. Oftentimes, it's this angle right there. And so now I can see that if I needed to find this angle that's created by uh, the blue lines here, these are transversals for that line and this line and then this one down here is a transversal for the laser beam and this side. If I wanted to find this angle I can see that I've already filled out both of the two angles that create that larger angle and all I would need to do is to add those two together and that would give me that angle measure. And so that's the idea for all these problems. You want to fill out the top six, fill out the bottom six, and then you interpret uh, based on your answer. Another one that looks like this is uh, a problem like this. So let's say instead of giving you two of the outside, they give you the outside and the inside, and let's say that they wanted you to find this angle right there. Well, it's not gonna be 136 because these are two separate transversals, and that's a, that's a mistake a lot of students make. So what we're going to do is we are going to, again, create that awesome laser beam right through the center of the picture. <coughs> yes, that's the sound laser beams make in Indiana. And uh, when I do that, notice that I take this, the original 108 that was here, it gets cut into two pieces. Not cut in half necessarily, but definitely cut into two pieces. And I'm going to ignore that again for right now. I'm going to go back to covering up half of it and filling out everything that I know. So in this case, I've got these six angles again. I'm going to take the 136 and I get to interpret 
all the places that the 136 should go. There, there, and there. And notice that they're definitely obtuse angles that you can see, and so don't put a 136 somewhere where you can see that it's an acute angle because that wouldn't make any sense, now would it? So I've got the 136, and then I can subtract from 180 degrees to find out the measure of the acute angle that is adjacent there, right? Because they're a linear pair. And you would end up with 44 degrees for that angle measure. So I go ahead and I fill out the rest of the 44 degrees. My little infinite cloner, I can clone it infinitely. I've got the power. Get that 44 degrees. Okay, and so I see that I've got this 44 degrees here and I've got almost nothing down here on the bottom. And so the only way that I can unlock one of these angles is by looking right here on the interior of these two blue rays right here. And so this angle right here that's part of this giant blue angle is 44 degrees and originally they gave me the 108. See it in the background there? So if the whole thing is 108 and this part is 44 degrees, then that means I should be able to subtract 44 from 108 and I should be able to get this angle measure down here. And when you do that, you end up with 64. So now I know that this other angle has got to be 64 degrees because both of them together make up that 108. And so now I can get this shade where I need it to be. Cover up this top half. And I've got that 64 and I can take that 64 and uh, I can move it wherever I need to move it. So I'm going to go ahead and infinitely clone. It goes there and it goes there. And then uh, I can subtract 64 from 180 to figure out the other angle that should make up the other three. And when you do that, you should get 116. So then I can fill out the rest of the picture with the 116. And then after that, I'll be able to find any angle that the book might ask me for based on all of the other angle measures that I've got. So there we go. All the angles are filled out. Remember, for this, the keys to this are you want to make sure that the picture is large enough that you can draw in each of these six angles because you will always have six on top and six on bottom. So if the picture is not large enough, redraw it so it is. Start out by drawing the laser. Cover up half of it. Fill out as many angles as you can. You should be able to get all six. And then do the same thing for the bottom half, and you should be able to answer any questions that you need answered. This was Math of Fanatic. I hope it was helpful. If you've got questions, just inch down below and start to type in. Deuces, everybody. <laughs>